Hello and welcome to another P5JS JavaScript video tutorial thingy mabob thing that I'm making. This tutorial, I'm going to cover something called the arguments array, which exists mysteriously in JavaScript, perhaps without you even knowing that it's there. What you can use it for, and this idea of overloading a function or overloading a constructor, and how do you have optional arguments to a function, all this stuff. Okay, well, what am I talking about, first of all? So let's just say today is a nice, Sunny, warm, beautiful day. It rained last night. A rainbow came out. And you just sat at your computer and decided, I want to program my own function called sum. And what sum is going to do is it's going to take uh, two arguments, a and b, and it's going to say, return a plus b. So it's just going to make a sum of whatever things I pass to it. So I could then say here in setup, I could say var uh, C equals, or you know, C equal, or whatever value equals the sum of five and fifteen. And if I say console.log val, we should see. Then if I go here, I should see twenty. And I can say something like sum two comma seven, and I'm going to get nine, or sum negative three comma seven, and I'm going to get four. So this function works. But what if I were to say this, sum four? not a number. Well, let's say I wanted to be able to actually have it return just the number four. How could I have it do that? It's getting not a number because what is the value of b in this case? If I were to say console.log b and run this again, you're going to see the value of b is undefined. Another, another way that I can consider undefined, undefined if I were to ask, is undefined true or false? Undefined is actually false. So something that I could do, for example, is just say something like, if b return a plus b, otherwise return a. So in this case, I now have a function that can perform differently based on the number of arguments it gets. Right? As long as it gets a second argument, return two of those two numbers together. If it doesn't get the second argument, right? if the b is false, simply return a. So in this case now, if I go back to the browser and I say sum 4 comma 5, I should get 9, but if I say sum 4, I'll just get 4. So we've now written a function that can optionally have a second argument. Very, very basic idea here. Now let's take this a few steps further. What if I just said sum with no arguments? Now I've got undefined again. So in this case, I could actually say if a, a, uh, if a and b, else if uh, then the, wait, I was going to say, if b, that means there has to be an a, right? Return a plus b. Uh, else if a, return a, else return 0. Ooh, I made this sort of like messy and awkward and weird. But you can start to sort of see what the possibilities are. So now I'm kind of checking if I get two arguments, return the sum of both of those. If I have uh, if I have one argument, return just that one argument. If I have no arguments, return the value 0. Let's just at least make sure that works. right? So I could say sum of 4 and 5, I get 9. Sum of 4, I get 4. Sum with nothing, I get 0. So great. So this is working. But what if I now want to say sum 4, 6, 8? I still only get 10, right? 8 isn't involved. Well, guess what? Any time you call a function in JavaScript, the arguments to that function, 4, 6, 8, those things get placed into what? An array. An array called arguments. You could just say the word arguments, and suddenly you have everything in an array. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I go back to the code, and I just say here, I say console.log arguments. And I say sum, whoops, ah, sum 4, 6, 8. You can see what is the value of arguments? It's an array, 4, 6, 8. So you know what I could actually do in the case of this function? I can write a function called sum. I don't even have to name any of the arguments here. I can say there is a value at 0. I can then go through the length of the array. 
I starts at 0, I goes all the way up through are the, all the arguments, val plus equals arguments index i, and then return val. This is now a function that can take any amount of things, you, any number of arguments, 0 arguments, 5 arguments, 10 arguments, 20 arguments, and it can loop through and add them all together. So now, here, I could say things like sum 5, and I have, oh, whoops, sorry. Uh, I think I didn't reload it. Sum 5, I have the number 5. Sum 5, comma 6, I have the number 11. Sum 5, comma 4, 3, comma 2, comma 5, comma 1, comma 10, comma 11, comma negative 5, comma 3, comma 3, 33. 68. Somebody confirm for me that that number is correct. It's going to take any number of arguments and loop through all of them. So you can think of all sorts of interesting possibilities that this might open up for you in how you write a function. I could also name those arguments too as well. So like for example, I don't know why I want to do this, but I could name the first argument and I could also say that return val plus a. <laughs> so in this case, this is a little bit weird, but if I say sum 1 comma 2, it's going to add 1 and 2 and then add 1 to it again. So I would get the number 4. A little bit silly, but you can see that you can both use that arguments array and you could also name, optionally name those arguments coming in. So there's a lot of possibilities of things you can do here. Now, let me make this even, just to make this even more a little bit stranger, what if I want my function, let's say I were to create an array. So I have an array that has the values 5, 3, 6 in it. So I know I could say 5, 3, 6 with sum, and I'm going to get 19. Did I, take, did, I, did I leave that weird extra plus a thing in there? I want to take that out. Um, run this again. I'm going to make that array. I'm going to do this. 14, right? So what, what, if I, what if I also wanted to be able to say sum array? In this case, look what it did. Something crazy happened because it actually tried to add 0 with the array, but then it tried to make the array a string and it concatenated together. JavaScript just tried to figure something out, but this isn't what I want. I want that if you pass this function an array as its argument, that you're going to add the elements of that array. So how would I do that? Well, what I want to do is I want to check. I could put this back in A. I could say if A is an instance of array, and I think capital or like this. So this is a kind of keyword in JavaScript instance of that can determine what kind of argument you passed in. So you could say like, oh, well, if the function receives a string as its argument, it should act this way. But if it receives a number as its argument, it should act this way. So if a is an instance of array, and I'm actually going to call this ARR, then what I want to do is do exactly this algorithm. But instead of using the arguments array, I just want to use that actual array. So now I'm going to say uh, or array.length and add all that up, right? So if you get an array, loop through that array and return the sum of everything in that array. If you don't get an array, then loop through the, because it's, there's just a sequence of numbers, then use the arguments array. So now I have like all sorts of possibilities here for how this function could perform. So now I can say, let me have sum, it still works if I give it 5, 3, and 6. Now if I make an array, 5, 3, and 6, and I say sum of that array, I should also get that same number. And if I were to say array dot uh, 4 equals a negative 1, and look at that array, whoops, <laughs> I have an undefined array index 3 equals 2. Uh, and look at that array again, and let me clear that, clear it, look at that, look at the array. And now if I say sum array, I should still get, I should get 15, which is right. 14 plus 2 is 16, minus 1 is 15. So now I have this function which can both receive an array. Now, unfortunately, I can't do this, right? I would have to write, you know, as an exercise for yourself, if you want a tricky exercise, how could you now write this function so that it can have mixed arrays and regular numbers and still add all those things together? Um, OK. Uh, yes, so in the chat, some people are saying I could use the apply function up and other types of things to like 
put the array into the arguments array, and that's a great suggestion. Maybe I'll cover that in a separate video. But right now, I just want to look at different ways that you can have flexible arguments for a function. And this often comes up in the case of making objects, like a particle object. So let's take this a little bit further. And let's just say that this is going to be a program. And I'm just going to take this and comment it out for right now. Um, and I'm going to say, let's say I have a, I'm, I'm writing a program with some sort of particle object. And the whole point of this particle object is that it has a position, which is a vector. And I'm going to make that vector width divided by 2, height divided by 2. And then I'm going to have a function called show, which, what does that function do? It draws a circle on the screen at that vector's x and y. And maybe fill.255. And I'm going to say here, I'm going to say uh, var p. p is a new particle. And then p.show. Now, you can see I run this program and I get that circle appearing in the center of the window. Now let's think about all the possible ways I might want to make a particle. For example, I might want to make, and let's do it, let's do this differently now. Let's, let's say there's an array called particles. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say particles index 0 is a new particle. And then I'm going to loop through and I'm just going to call show on all the particles in that array. So this is essentially the same program. But the reason why I want to show this to you right, is that I want to be able to say things like this. Well, particles index 1, what if I could make a particle this way? What if I could say this? And what if I could say particles index 2 equals uh, a new particle? with that particular vector. What if I were to say this? Particles index 3 equals, equals a new particle. Uh, whoops, uh, let's make this 150 comma 100. 100 comma 150. Now, I'm not so sure I really want all of these, but you could imagine an object you might be able to, in your code, you might want to make particles. And sometimes you make a particle with no object, no arguments, and it always puts it at a default location. Or you could specify the location as two values, an x and a y. Or you could just pass in a vector, and it would put the particle at that vector. Or maybe for some reason you were getting uh, data from a text file and you're reading in strings, and what if you give it two numbers separated by a comma? How would you deal with it then? This is the kind of scenario that can come up in many things that you might want to program. So let's see if we can get all these particles to appear on the screen. So one thing that I might do here, first of all, is give it some, let's give it two arguments, an x and a y. So one thing we can do is say this, and actually I'm going um, to change it from having a position vector. <laughs> just to giving it, just right now, I'm going to change it to just having an x and a y. So one thing I could actually do that you'll see is I'm going to say this dot x equals x or 100. This dot y equals y or 100. This would cover me for these first two cases, right? I'm basically saying I want to take the value that comes in or some default value if it's false. And in this case, it would be false because it would be undefined. No value would come in. So let's, um, let's actually say I want to make the particle at 150 comma 50. And we could see, um, we, should be able, we should see two particles now, right? So this is, um, and let me give all the, uh, OK, it doesn't really matter. The point is, you can see now, when the particle gets two arguments coming in, it, it uses those two arguments, like 150 comma 50. When it doesn't get those coming in, it uses 100 comma 100. So this is. 100 comma 100, and this is uh, 50 comma 150. That's that second particle. OK, so those two cases are covered. Now what about this third case? What if I'm passing in a vector? So one thing I can do is I can say, OK, well, actually, right here I can say, if this dot x is an instance of a p5 dot vector object, then this dot x equals x dot x and this dot y equals x dot y. Now, this is a little bit weird because I'm sort of stuck in this place of I named that first argument x, 
So now x is kind of this vector. I still have to call it x. So I might actually want to just use more generic names like a and b. Um, in this case, so I can say if, and I'm not saying if this dot x. I'm saying if a is an instance of p phi vector, do this. Otherwise, go back to this other idea. So now I'm checking. I've got two, three possibilities. One is I've gotten a vector. Or another possibility is I got nothing. Or I got two separate values. And we can run this again. You can see now I have three of them. All three of those worked. And I have one last possibility, which is this string. So I can also say else if A is an instance of string, I guess. I forgot. There's a sort of funny thing with strings that um, I forgot about. Because this if A is an instance of string is not actually checking if A is just text. But if it's an actual like fully formed string object in JavaScript. And uh, let me just show you. This is a little bit of an aside, but it's kind of worth it since it might come up. Um, let's say I create a var s equals uh, test. Now if I say t s instance of string, you're going to actually see that that gives me false. But if I were to say s is a new string with the text test in it, right? it's actually like a whole string object now. And this will actually return true. But in most cases, I'm just going to be in the land of saying s equals test. Whoops. Something like this. So another function that I can use in JavaScript is type of. And I can say type of s. And I'll actually get the word string back. And so I think in this case, I could say else if type of a equals string. Whoops. Then, now let's see if that works. I'm going to run this. And you can see that came through. So since that came through, what I need to do now is say um, uh, I can use like uh, a.split by a comma. Uh, and then I can say uh, this.x equals number nums index 0. And this.y equals number nums index 1. So split takes something. Um, takes the string. So let, let's, let me do this, actually. So let's say s is 100, the numbers in a string, 100 comma 150. And what I want to do is I want to say nums equals s dot split by a comma. Ah, s dot split by a comma. So now nums is just an array with two strings in it. And so I sh could say nums index 0. But that's actually not the number 100. It's the string 100. But, and there's lots of ways I could probably convert it. But one way is I could just do this. Convert it to a number. Num whoops, not numbers, number. And you can see now I have the value 100. So I'm just doing that in the code here. I'm saying, ah, if I happen to get a string, split it up by the comma, then convert those two numbers. And we should see then another particle at uh, 100, 150. So if I now run this again, we can see now I have four particles. So we've now written a constructor function that optional, that takes two arguments. You could give it no arguments. Uh, you could give it two numbers. You could give it a vector. You could give it a string. And it's going to figure out how to fill in the x and y based on what it gets. So this is one just kind of small instance of that. But there's lots of other scenarios where this could come up where you want to write a function to arbitrarily handle a certain number of arguments of different types. Um, in, incidentally, if you were doing this in processing or in Java, you would just write multiple copies of the function, each with different arguments, and then handle the, those arguments in that. But in JavaScript, since the arguments don't have a type, a type is not part of the signature of that function, of that method, you have to handle them with an if statement by having sort of optional flexible arguments. OK, hopefully you found this helpful and you learned something about what the arguments array in JavaScript does and how to write a function or a constructor function that has flexible different kinds of arguments and different numbers of arguments. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.